Welcome everyone. My name is Luis Castrejón, and today I'm going to present work on annotating object instances with a polygon RNN. This joint work with Costa Kundu, Sania Fiedler, and Raquel Urtasson at the University of Toronto. Instance segmentation is one of the fundamental tasks in computer vision. It consists in determining the image regions that belong to individual object instances. For example, in this image from the Cityscapes dataset, we can segment the road, we can segment the sidewalk on the left, or we can segment the car on the right. While annotating these few instances might not seem like a lot of work, in an image like this one, there are more than 50 discrete object instances. Annotating all of them is expensive and very time consuming. With an approximation of 30 seconds to annotate each instance, we estimate that it took more than 500 hours to annotate the more than 3,000 images in the Cityscapes dataset. Using the same approximation, we estimate that the community has already spent more than 10,000 hours annotating around 160K images. If we want to build the next generation of large-scale instance segmentation datasets, we need to speed up annotation. In this work, I'm going to present Polygon RNA, which is an instance segmentation model designed to make annotation cheap and easy. Polygon RNA automatically generates predictions in the form of polygons. More importantly, our model is interactive. It accepts users' modifications, which are used to improve its predictions. The structure of the talk is going to be the following one. First, I'm going to motivate why predicting polygons might be a good idea. Then, I'm going to show how we, the details of the Polygon RNN model. After that, I'm going to show how we can use Polygon RNN as an annotation tool. And finally, I'm going to talk about the experiments we conducted. A polygon is a natural form of annotation. Current instance segmentation datasets are annotated by humans using polygons. The reason why is that a polygon is a sparse representation of an image region. In the image below, five polygon vertices represent the same image area as 200 pixels. Since it's a sparse representation, in a polygon, it's easy to incorporate user modifications. If we want to modify the image region, we can add, delete, or move vertices. Now I'm going to explain the details of the polygon RNN model. Our problem is the following. We are given a bounding box with a center instance. And our goal is to predict a sequence of vertices that describes a polygon outlining this instance. We first want to extract some image features for the bounding box. In this work, we use a VGG16 convolutional neural network for training on ImageNet. To correctly outline the instance, we need both high-level information, indicating which image regions belong to different object categories, as well as low-level information, indicating edges and borders. Therefore, we use skip connections that fuse together features coming from different levels in the CNN hierarchy. We now want to predict the polygon using these image features. Since a polygon can be parameterized as a sequence of vertices, we use a recurrent neural net that predicts one vertex at a time. More specifically, we use a convolutional LSTM, a two-layer convolutional LSTM, which is a type of recurrent neural network that operates on 2D maps and updates its hidden state using convolutions. Thus, we reduce the number of parameters while preserving the spatial nature of the task. The output of the convol STM is also a 2D grid, which indicates the probabilities of the current location, of the current prediction. At each time step, we select the location with the highest value as our current vertex. Furthermore, to help the RNN, at each time step, we add the two previously predicted vertices as an additional input. These vertices uniquely determine the direction that the prediction should follow. Now I'm going to show how we can use Polygon RNN as a notation tool. Let us first consider this scenario. One of the predicted vertices might be brown. A user can correct this vertex by selecting a new location in the output map. This correction is then fed into the model, which uses it to update its prediction and continue predicting the polygon. Here's how we can use this in practice. First, 
a user draws a bounding box around the instance to annotate. This bounding box doesn't need to be perfectly tight, but the instance needs to be roughly centered. The model then generates a first prediction. Some of the vertices in this prediction might be wrong. As explained in the previous slide, a user can correct the location of these vertices. These corrections are then going to be used by the model to generate a new and refined segmentation. As we will see in this example, the roof of the van is now correctly segmented. Now I'm going to talk about the experiments we conducted. First, I'm going to talk about segmenting instances without using any kind of user interaction. Our first experimental setup is the following. We assume we are given bounding boxes for some instances. For each of them, we want to generate a segmentation without any kind of user interaction. We want these segmentations to be as close as possible as given ground truth annotations. To compare the performance of the different models, we are going to compute the intersection over the union of our predictions with the ground truth annotations. We are going to do this for the eight instance categories in the Cityscapes dataset. Let us first introduce a baseline. We consider a square box centered on the instance crop as the segmentation mask. A square box is one of the simplest forms of polygons, containing only four vertices. This sets a lower bound for our model. We want polygon RNN to generate finer uplines using more complex polygons. On the right, I'm going to show a graph indicating the mean IUU obtained across all categories for each of the models, while on the bottom, I'm going to show the detailed IUU metric for each category. Higher IUU means that the prediction is closer to the ground truth annotation, indicating that we are performing better. We compare the two state-of-the-art instance segmentation models. First, we compare to DeepMask, which produces dense pixel-wise instance segmentations. We also compare to SharMask, which is an improved version of DeepMask that operates at a higher output resolution. Polygon RNN performs better than these models. We beat SharMask in five out of the eight categories, and we obtain an improvement of 1% in mean IOU. Furthermore, Polygon RNN produces segmentations in the form of polygons, which a user can easily interact with. Here I show some examples of our segmentations. On the left, I show the ground truth annotations, while on the right, I show our segmentations. Note that we only require bounding boxes to generate these segmentations. Now I'm going to talk about how we can annotate instances, and we are going to do this by simulating user corrections. Again, we are given bounding boxes for some instances, and we want to generate a segmentation for each of them. We are going to predict one vertex at a time. We are going to align, align each of these predictions with the corresponding ground truth vertex in the annotation. If one of these vertices deviates farther than a distant threshold t from its corresponding ground truth vertex, we are going to automatically correct it. This correction is then going to be fed into the model, which is going to continue the prediction, taking it into account. To compare the different models, we are going to count the number of clicks required to annotate each instance on average, and we are going to consider the resulting IOU. Before, let's compute the human agreement on the Cityscapes dataset. We ask the professional annotator to annotate a small subset of current instances in the Cityscapes dataset. We compared their annotation with the ground truth one. And we, re we saw that the human agreement was 78% IUU. In the image below, we show an example of different human judgments. The human annotations for these instances required an average number of clicks of 33.6 to annotate each instance. Our model, without any kind of user interaction, performed well but it didn't reach the level of human agreement. However, once we introduce corrections, our model achieves human level IUU, while requiring a much reduced number of clicks. With a threshold of one, small deviations are automatically corrected, and we simulate the strict annotator. With higher thresholds, we required a reduced number of interactions. We also computed these statistics for all the classes in the full held out set of the Cityscapes dataset. 
Using the human agreement on cars as a proxy for all categories, we can see that with a threshold of three, we achieve human level IOU, while we provide an almost five times speed up compared to the original cityscapes annotations. We also compare to GrabCAD. GrabCAD is a segmentation model that is commonly used in annotation tools. User in GrabCAD mark foreground and background region with strokes. The model then generates a segmentation using these strokes as a user constraint. We compare on a subset of the car instances already annotated by the human annotator. We ask two in house users to use GrabCAD to annotate these instances as well. These annotators reported problems to obtain accurate segmentations, while the number of clicks that they required was much higher than with our model. Now we are going to test the generalization capabilities of our model. We took models trained on Cityscape and used them to annotate the instances in the KD dataset without using any kind of fine tuning. Our models reached the estimated human agreement on Kitty while requiring less than six clicks on average to annotate the instances. Polygon RNN can be used to cheaply annotate new datasets. In conclusion, Polygon RNN is an instance segmentation model that annotates object instances with polygons. It easily incorporates user corrections, and when used as an annotation tool, it provides a significant speed up in annotation. Therefore, it's the perfect tool to annotate new datasets. Thank you for your attention, and we'll be happy to see you at Poster 22.